Senator Sanders, uh, good to see you as always. President Trump is accusing Democrats of being obstructionists on the tax issue. He tweeted, quote, if Democrats were not such obstructionists and understood the power of lower taxes, we, we would be able to get many of their ideas into the bill. What's your response? Well, that's total nonsense. Democrats were completely shut out of this process just as they were shut out of the health care uh, legislation process. Here is the fact, and Trump should understand this. What this legislation is about is fulfilling the promises, Republican promises, made to wealthy campaign contributors. There is a reason why the billionaire class provides hundreds of millions of dollars in campaign contributions to Republicans. And now is payback time. What this legislation is about, Jake, is giving 50% of the tax benefits to the top 1%, and at the end of 10 years in the House bill, forcing almost 50% of the middle class to actually pay more in taxes. What this legislation is about, absolutely insanely, is repealing the estate tax, a $269 billion tax break, not for the top 1%, but for the top two-tenths of 1%, a handful of the wealthiest families in this country, like the Walton family and the Koch brothers family, and mm -hmm. other very, very wealthy families. So, Senator and by the way, yeah. by the way, Jake, one other point. When they run up a $1.5 trillion deficit, as they will in this legislation, they're going to come back, and that's what Paul Ryan is saying, they're going to come back with massive cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, because they say, oh my goodness, the deficit and the national debt are too high. This is a terrible, terrible piece of legislation, and it must be defeated. So Republicans' response to the idea that 50% is going to the top 1% is the top 1% pays a disproportionate amount of taxes. I do want to better understand your objection to, the, to the, this aspect of the bill. Is it the size of the tax cut going to the wealthy that bothers you, or the idea that the wealthy are getting any tax cut at all? Well, first of all, what the Republicans are forgetting about is, yeah, the rich pay more in taxes, because we have massive income and wealth inequality in America. 52% of all new income in America is going to the top 1%. Duh. Yeah, the rich are going to be paying more in taxes. But does anybody watching this program really believe that the major crisis facing our country, when the middle class is shrinking, when our infrastructure is falling apart, when young people can't afford to go to college or are leaving school deeply in debt, when 28 million people have no health insurance, does anyone really think that the major crisis facing this country is the need to give hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to the very richest people in this country. A centerpiece of this tax bill is a significant reduction in the corporate tax rate. Is it not true that lowering corporate tax rates uh, would encourage more companies to set up shop here in the United States and discourage them from no, doing, it's doing it? It's not true. No, it's not true in this sense. First of all, the Republicans are not telling the truth about the effective corporate tax rate. Nominally, it is 35 percent. Effectively, it's somewhere around 14 or 15 percent. Second of all, what they are trying to do is pass what is called a territorial uh, tax uh, program, which will, in fact, lower taxes for corporations that invest abroad. In fact, a very serious argument can be made that their legislation will result in the exodus of jobs from the United States, companies going abroad, paying lower taxes there. Our job right now is to end the absurdity of one out of five major profitable corporations in America today, today, not paying a nickel in federal taxes. Their legislation would make it worse. And by the way, Jake, what they are also doing is making permanent, making permanent the corporate tax breaks, making temporary the tax breaks that benefit working families and the middle class. Absolutely crazy. As you know, uh, the Senate tax bill underwent uh, major change this week, and it now includes uh, repealing the individual mandate that is part of Obamacare. Uh, you and Senator Schumer quickly denounced the move, saying that this would throw 13 million people off of health insurance. Now, the Washington Post's fact checker uh, looked at the claim and gave Senator Schumer uh, two Pinocchios for that because these people would be voluntarily going without insurance because they no longer have to pay a fine. How to, explain to me, how is giving people a choice whether or not to give it, uh, have health care and not having a fine anymore, how is that throwing 13 million people off of health insurance? Well, 13, there will be 13, we already have 28 million people who have no health insurance. Every other major country on earth guarantees health care to all people. What would happen here is 13 million more people would not have health insurance. 
Now, some people say, well, if I'm 25 years of age and I'm healthy, hey, no problem. I'm not going to buy health insurance. Well, you know what? 25-year-olds come down and are diagnosed with leukemia. They get hit by buses. And you know who's going to have to pick up the bill for those 25-year-olds? Uh, you are, I am, and everybody else in America who is now paying for health insurance. The studies indicate that when you repeal the individual mandate, uh, what you're going to see is premiums go up for everybody else by about 10% because your pool of consumers will be older and sicker. Our job is to join the rest of the industrialized world, guarantee health care to all people those right, end the absurdity of our country paying twice as much per capita as any other country, not have a situation where 13 million more Americans don't have health insurance. You've weighed in on the allegations against your fellow progressive Senator Al Franken, Democrat of Minnesota, saying that you, quote, agree with the calls for an ethics committee investigation into this deeply troubling incident. I have a question about this new environment that we're in. A, a lot of people are re-examining past allegations against folks like Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas or President Bill Clinton. Your colleague, Democratic Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, said this week that Bill Clinton should have resigned after it came out that he had an inappropriate sexual relationship with a White House intern. Do you agree with Senator Gillibrand? Look, I don't think that at this moment our goal is to look back 20 years or 30 years. Our goal is to go forward. And our goal is to understand that we have a real crisis in this country today within the political world, within the corporate world, within the media world, where women are being harassed every single day. And our job is to change that culture. But it's not only harassment on the job. Right now, we are seeing a situation in Washington and in states all over this country. A major effort to take away a woman's right to control her own body. Major struggles to take away women's reproductive rights. We women are making 80 cents on the dollar compared to men. The world has changed, and we have not caught up with that. And obviously, what has got to happen is women have got to be treated as equal citizens, have to be comfortable at work, and have to be first-class citizens in this country, which is now not the case. Do you think that Al Franken should resign? I think that's a decision for Al Franken and the people of the state of Minnesota. Uh, my understanding is that Al is a very popular senator. Uh, people in Minnesota think that he is doing uh, a good job, and his political future will rest with the people of Minnesota. Thank you so much.